Right, we already did this, so we're not going to go through and solve it. But I want to address some kind of important parts of this. First and foremost, we have a number, we have a unit measurement, and we have a substance. Okay, so every time we write something down, we're going to have those three pieces or those three components as part of that system. So when we look at a problem, we'll be solving for the number, but the number needs to be tied to a measurement and a substance. So when we look at this, is our measurement unit the same? Grams versus atoms, no. The measurement unit's not the same, so I will have to go through some kind of measurement unit conversion. The next piece I also have to address is what happened to the substance? Is the substance the same? No. Right? So the measurement unit, we have to convert like we did in the previous unit, and we're slowly adding in more conversion factors, like Avogadro's number. So, so, so we have our measurement unit and we have our substance unit. Right. Right. And then we have the numerical value associated with it. So there's three components to everything we write down. If we write them all down, we can actually start to see what we have to solve for. That's the point of our dimensional analysis system. So when we compare left to right, we notice that we don't have the number on the right. That's because we're solving for it. The measurement unit has changed, so I'm going to have to do a conversion to change the measurement unit. Right? I'm going to have to find that information somewhere or have it memorized. Right? The other part is the substance has also changed. Right? So I would need to be able to find that conversion factor as well. One of the things that we addressed within this is do we have that conversion factor already available to us? So if we ask again, the substance, right, the substance needs to be converted. Do I have the conversion factor? What am I trying to relate? Um, what substances? F2, yeah. F2 needs to somehow be equal to F. Okay. Do I have the numerical values to include with those substances? Yes? Oh, you don't, but you can kind of do that. You can figure it out. We kind of maybe do, just in case Mike says yes, you you're right. <laughs> we kind of maybe do, just in case Mike says no, then we're all, we all said kind of. We were tired of failures. <laughs> okay. Boring two, so is it? What does the symbol F2 mean? Boring gas and gas things. There are two fluorines in fluorine gas. Yes. What does so that mean? Are we there's accounting for its mass? It's two to one. That means there's two to one? Yeah, that's why. Two to one? No, one to two. There's one F2. For every one F2, I have two Fs. Okay. Is this a kind of, sort of, have this conversion factor? No. We have it. Right? Yeah. We have to recognize we have it by looking at the information given. Right? You needed to know F2. That's what allows that conversion in that system to come across. Make sense? So if we're going to convert substances, we can use chemical formulas to do that. Are there other ways to convert substances? Kind of, sort of, maybe. <laughs> Yes, there are ways to convert substances. Is there a way to convert hydrogen, hydrogen gas, into water? How could I possibly do that? Add an oxygen. I could react it with oxygen. In a chemical reaction. So a chemical reaction allows us to convert substances. Would this chemical reaction allow us to convert substances correctly? If it was right. It was balanced. If it was right, what means balance or what means right? Balance. This is going back to our balance. Is it a balanced equation? No. no, so it doesn't allow us to convert yet. So what do we have to do? Balance. 
balance it by going through and evaluating how many hydrogens on the left, how many hydrogens on the right, oxygens left, oxygens right, then hopefully what we find out is that we need two H2s to make two waters. And we now have a balanced equation. This balanced equation allows me to convert the substance of hydrogen into the substance of water, just like a chemical formula did. Chemical equations will do the exact same thing. Right? Are we responsible for knowing chemical equations? Yes. All chemical equations? No. What type of chemical reaction is it? Combination. If I just told you I reacted hydrogen and oxygen, could you convert those substances? Yes. You're using the balanced chemical equation to convert those substances, right? Between hydrogen and oxygen. If I gave you two hydrogens, how many oxygens were necessary to react? Yeah, what's the answer? If I gave you two hydrogens, how many oxygens do you need? Now you're all like, dude, he's saying it's that in such a weird way that's a trap. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter. Who cares? One. Okay. We hear the argument, one oxygen. Thank you, Riley. I appreciate that. Yeah, I could be wrong. It's okay. Okay. It's okay. If I give you two hydrogens, how many oxygens are necessary? To complete this reaction. Is the equation balanced? No, we'd have to balance it. We'd balance it by getting rid of that two. If I give you two hydrogens, how many oxygens do you need? You would need two, because that's how it would balance out. Okay. If I give you just the reactants for a combination reaction, you don't know what the products are. You're not responsible for knowing that. You're like, really? Didn't you say I was responsible for knowing that? No, in fact, I told you no. You are not responsible for knowing combination reactions. Don't remember that? There's a lecture video. Go back to that lecture video and look it up. Rewatch it and be like, oh, yeah, dude, Mike totally said don't memorize how to do combination reactions. Okay? Because there's too many possible results. Even something as simple as hydrogen and oxygen, what happens? We could have made water. We could also make hydrogen peroxide. Does that change those formulas ever so slightly? Okay? So you're not expected to predict combination reactions. You would be expected to balance them. You are expected, if I gave you the words, to turn it into a chemical equation and then balance that chemical equation. You're responsible for all of that content. Okay? So all of those individual stages that we've talked about in the past come back. And they keep coming back. You have to be applying all of that knowledge. Kind of make sense? Okay. So let's continue to beat this dead horse. Chapter 9 is chemical equations. Sorry, that was bad now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> An equation is like what? Because how would you describe an equation? Tell it to somebody who's never heard of a chemical equation. Chemical equation. A chemical equation is like a recipe because you're taking varying components and you're putting them together to make something new. That's what a chemical equation is doing. That's it. Right. Do you have to balance it? I'm going to take 500 pounds of flour, a cup of water, an ounce of sugar, and I'm going to have the best cake ever. Okay? That's going to be a crap cake. <laughs> That's going to be a not tasty cake. Let's try that. Don't do that. Okay? What are you talking I am totally mature. We only mock our leaders. So, formula usage. Okay, the whole point of a formula, like building this wheel, how do I build that wheel? Tell me how to build that wheel. You start with the center. Okay. I would say. I say start with the center. Does, does anybody have a name for the center? Yeah, that would be the 
Okay. We start with our axle, okay, which also known as our center. How many axles do I need? So I need one axle. What else do I need? I need spokes. How many spokes do I need? Varies depending on the wheel. Your standard is usually 32. I do know this. So for whatever reason, this didn't come out earlier in the semester. I used to cycle very frequently. I would bike to work three times a week. Yeah. So I've put together bicycles. So I'm fairly familiar with them. 32 is standard. So 32 spokes. So I take an axle and 32 spokes, and I now have my wheel? No. I need a rim. How many rims do I need? One. And a tire. And a tire. Okay. And we can say a tube. We can do a tube. The, t the pump goes into that? What is that going to produce? I add all those things together, and what do I get? A bike tire. Okay. I get one wheel. What have I just written down? A recipe for a A recipe to building a wheel. Okay. I have all of those extra words in there. That's a bunch of extra letters. I noticed nobody wrote this down. Okay. So that could be a fun test question. How to build a, how to build a bike wheel. So if you wrote that all down, you're probably like, that's too much to write. I don't want to write that. Because I'm lazy, and I don't want to write out all of those words. So I might come up with system some kind of system or symbology to shorten the amount of stuff like that I have to write we'll come back to that and this is more like an axle is a symbol of an a spokes are symbol of s, s. a rim yeah. I know R. Germany. <laughs> Tire. Wow, who knew like a library visit would just get everybody like crazy excited? It's okay, I didn't make fun of him for a spot to put power wheel or anything. A tube would be T. Anybody notice an issue? There's two T's. Two T's, and those meant different things. Okay, so TB. we can do... TB. We got two. Wheel. Okay. I could go through and write... WHL. WHL. Okay, or WH. Okay. Is there another notation I could use? Because that wheel is now only composed of those intermediate pieces. What made the wheel? Okay, a recipe made the wheel. So if I just wrote down then... Yeah, let's just use this. One WH, you'd be like, oh, it has all of those pieces in it. Why not? Even if we define WH's wheel... What was the recipe? Uh, one spoke, 32, one gram, 32. It took us like 10 minutes to come up with that recipe. That's just one wheel. Okay. I'm actually spot on topic. Is there another notation we could come up to describe a wheel? Like, I guess I'm trying to understand here. I guess what you're trying to say is, is there anything else to add to it that would indicate that all that is... Add to it or change? We're now looking at the combination of the indivisible parts to make a larger piece. We now have a formula from the elemental pieces. Right. Sure. 
right? So we're trying to come up with a system that allows us to scale further and higher. Why did we not use this system to describe the wheel initially? We knew what a wheel was. How many of you knew what calcium hydroxide was prior to the class? Two people out of the whole class. Prior meant before the class. Right? Two people out of the whole class. Right? So we needed a system that would allow us to scaffold and go to larger and larger structures quickly and easily and efficiently. It's easier if we just list out the indivisible parts because those parts could be used in other things. That's the system we're using in our formulas. That allows us to manipulate and now come up with conversion factors. To make one wheel, I need 32 spokes. I don't have to go back to the recipe. My recipe is already written out for me. It defines it. Okay? So that's the use of looking at a formula. I have all the constituent pieces within it. Okay? I could do that in the form of a chemical equation. But now what could I do with said wheel? I don't do anything with a wheel, right? I just made wheels and I'm like, hey, wheels. I could attach it to like a body to make maybe a bicycle. Okay. So I can now create a new recipe using those pieces to scaffold to a newer system. That's what my chemical reactions and chemical formulas are there for. They're simple instructions allowing us how to build a bike. And everybody laughed at looking at spokes and wheels and even building a bicycle. Okay. All of that is exactly the same as our chemical equations and our chemical formulas. And yet, what happens when we look at chemical equations and chemical formulas? You all screw it up. You're welcome. Okay. I do it too. Okay. Why is looking at spokes and wheels such an easy, like, duh thing, but looking at chemistry now all of a sudden mind-explodingly difficult? That's something familiar. Where is this other book? Something, something, something familiar helps. What else is special about a bicycle and a wheel? You can actually see it. You can go out and say, hey, I'm going to pick up a wheel. Here's a wheel. I can see all of the pieces in it. I can touch all of the pieces. Can you do that with chemistry? No. Okay. And even when we grab H2O, cool, yeah, let's grab H2O. How much H2O did I just grab? A lot. Not a single molecule, a single unit of water. I grabbed probably, yeah, a couple moles of water. 12 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. A number that is so large that we had to invent a conversion factor to get rid of the powers of 10 so that we can be like, oh, it's just two. Right. How much is okay. the ocean? A lot. <laughs> 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 How much is the large okay. so, and <laughs> Hey, we only split that up so we can understand the size of the Yeah, it was on the point class that I was like, hey, you should know. I think I did actually look it up so I could get the answer right. Um, but regardless, what we're looking at is these large volumes. We're trying to scale these back to something else. Right? Once we have it, we can then manipulate it. How could I manipulate it? Right? Well, one thing, I could condense my formula. Two wheels instead of drawing out each wheel. Right? Once I have that, someone built four bikes. How many wheels and frames were used? Eight wheels, Eight wheels, four frames. You did that really, really fast. Did you write anything down for that? No. Why not? Because I can count to eight. What's that? Because we're in college. <laughs> you can envision the bike. You can see those pieces. You can separate them down. You can count it out. Well, if I had four bikes, that means I had all these objects, and I can count those out. Great. That's phenomenal. Because you can see and manipulate those structures. Again, what happens when we move to chemistry? You can't. Which means, what do you need to do? Stop envisioning things and write it out. <laughs> Simple question, you all know the answer. Write it out. 
Give me the work to prove your answer is true. Are you wanting us to write down the So what I want you to do is show me. Wheel to FR. I want you to show me that eight wheels comes from four bikes. Show me that information. Right. And I'm getting people saying, well, that's multiplying by two. Okay, so I can multiply by 12. Does that make me right? No. Why is your two better than my 12? Nothing in your work here shows that. Fix the work. Where are you getting that two from? The wheels. What do you mean the wheels? This says eight wheels, so I should write eight. Where are you getting that two from? We know that we have four bikes. We know that each bike requires. You're getting the two wheels from the chemical equation, right? So that is two what? Wheels. Awesome. So now four bikes times two wheels is going to be eight wheels. So what are you saying? What else needs to happen in this expression? Two, two wheels right. per, and over one Their bike. Their two wheels one make one. up one bike. So they cancel out. Deep, deep, horrible sigh, because what does that now look like? Oh, guys, it looks like these. Oh, son of a... Yeah, exactly <laughs> what we've been talking about for the last, like, five weeks. Yeah. This is dimensional analysis. I hate it. Right? And the problem that you have within chemistry is that you're used to doing this work. Okay. So then there's this suggestion, because everybody goes through and does it. Well, if you put 12, then you'd have to put in six bikes. And then it just reduce down. Okay. Then it would just reduce down. Where did the 12 and 6 come from? Where, how'd you say six bikes? How did you get that you needed to have six bikes? I mean, what did you do? <laughs> so you're like, yeah, you could ride 12 wheels, it's just six bikes. But the process I had to do was an entirely new dimensional analysis question that involved the exact same conversion that boiled right out of the chemical equation. Yeah, you're doing twice as much work to do the exact same thing. Okay? This is why you should directly pull information that you have and not start combining conversion factors. When you combine conversion factors, you increase the odds of making a mistake. Did you do it right when you said six bikes was 12 wheels? Yeah. Yeah. You just did it longer. Can I yell at you? Well, clearly I could yell at you because I just did. Okay. But can I yell at you for getting the answer wrong? Yeah. Was the answer wrong? No. No, it was right. I can't yell at you for getting it wrong. But could you okay. yell at us I can yell at you it? for coming up with a crap process okay, where you've combined conversion factors. And when it comes to bikes and wheels, all I can do is yell at you and get mad that you aren't doing a process that will consistently work. Okay? But you're like, neener, 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 I'm getting the answer right. Okay. Cool. And then the next exam rolls through where all of those unit systems are now things you can't manipulate in your head, and you get all of the questions wrong as opposed to two questions. And now what happens? The shoe is on the other foot. And I'm going, neener, 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 welcome to a, seeing me again next semester. Okay. Believe it or not, I don't want to see you in this class ever again. And that's not because I don't like you. You're great people. Okay. But I don't want to see you in Chem 130 again. I want to make sure that you have a process that consistently works, that works every time, not just the times that you know how to manipulate those structures. That's dimensional analysis. We covered that enough? You're like, yeah, Mike, I get it. Yep. Yeah, okay, well then let's just move on. Oh, new question. Six wheels and three frames. How many bikes can be made? So God, Mike, just stop it. No. <laughs> Six wheels, three frames. How many bikes can be made? Okay. Oh, what the? Got those. Okay. 
You know the answer. You can do the stuff in your head, right? And do that stuff in your head. Right. To get your answer. Now come up with the work to show this. Six wheels and three frames. How do you do it? Okay. Right. Here's where you can be like, fine, Mike, I will try it just this once. What answer do we want? Bikes. Bikes. What am I given? Six wheels and three frames. Okay. Six wheels and three frames. So nine. Isn't that six plus three? No, that's not, that's not what this is, no. Oh, okay. So fix my notation. So, uh, um, times parentheses? No, 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 no. Yeah, one, one frame. Can you parentheses that? Over two wheels. Are we allowed to parentheses? Sure. We need okay. to end up with bikes, right? times. God. God, yep. And then two wheels. Yeah, but you gotta put it in the bottom. Yeah, okay, thank you. No, 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 no. Wait, no, 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 no. no, no. Need frames, buddy. Whoa, 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 whoa. You said put <laughs> wheels under frames. <laughs> he said that. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, what about that? What do you got? So, can you do six wheels over one times? Two wheels as a denominator over one bike as a numerator. Oh yeah. Times. <laughs> oh, you got you got a cheering section. <laughs> and then, you said times. And then so one bike on the bottom with one frame on the top. I think. Yes. I yeah. Think. It's one frame. Hey, Did three frames wait, make wait, it into here? We're left with frames. Oh, but we need bikes. We know we don't, we don't want frames. We didn't bring in three frames. I agree. You brought in this conversion factor of frames to bikes, but I didn't bring in three frames. Okay, let's bring in frames. I know, but then you'd be left with frames. You have bikes cancel out. Bikes are going to cancel out because you have one. Oh, okay. So there's an option. The bikes are going to cancel out. You don't want that. Dang it. No. What was the answer supposed to be? Bikes. A uh, number. Oh, three bikes. Can anybody do that math for me? Uh, three. Um, three. So given bikes. six wheels, I can make three bikes. Isn't that what you were trying to solve for? Does your work show that three bikes could be made? Yeah. yeah. Assuming what? Just the wheels. <laughs> Assuming I have enough frames to back this up. Oh, okay. How would I prove that I have enough frames to back this up? So three yeah, frames over one, over one times, yeah, one frame. Oh, yeah. How many frame or bikes can I make with my frames? Three bikes. Three bikes. Do my frames support the wheel work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now my answer is six, right? No. no. Why? Because math. They're both the same thing. One was a requirement for the other one. Okay? They're sistered into each other. These are two separate equations to go through to say the maximum amount I could make was this. Since those numbers are equal to each other, that is now the maximum amount I could make. Three bikes. Okay? So to solve this question, you did two conversion factors. You did them beautifully, amazingly, in your head. Writing them out, you have to show all that work. But do you need to do two equations for this? Like you still need two equations, yes. There's no way to make it that's one. First you cannot do it in one equation oh, because you have two different equations. conversions, two different systems that you're converting, okay? Two different parts, okay? Why did, could, did we have to split this? In the previous systems, we kept one conversion all the way through because we were converting between one substance and another not converting two different substances to the same substance. Yeah. So we have to run two separate conversions. See, that's an idea. So you guys totally get this now, right? 
Uh, no. Oh, good. Yeah. Could you I think we already knew you. It's always a loaded question. Given just two wheels, how many bikes can I make? Quick. Two none. wheels, how many bikes can I make? None. That's exactly what I hear. I heard a one and I heard a none. One. So one and zero. How many bikes can I make? Which is true? Both. They didn't give you any frames. But you need... If we read the question, did they give you any frames? No. Yeah, but you can still make one bike. You can make one bike with just two wheels. With just two wheels, no. Oh, just. It's the word just changes everything. The word just changes everything. So you mean reading the English carefully changes your answer? Yes. Be very careful with the English language to ensure what's being asked for out of it. Does every one of these questions have to be loaded like this? Yes. Every single one. Just. Okay. The biggest reason why this one is here is that in chemistry, we change the language around a little bit and we say, okay, uh, given two wheels, okay, or given two wheels were consumed, how many bikes can be made? Why is it now one and not zero? said word consumed, that means a reaction took place. The word consumed means a reaction took place. What reaction? Oh, the chemical reaction that we had at the top of the screen. If I have two wheels and those are consumed, they had to react with frames. So there's inferred information that there you is, when you use the word consumed, that the other also was consumed along the Yes. So we have to be very careful with reading our question to Make sure we know exactly is what is being supplied in each of those cases. The answer is now one. The two wheels do go through and get consumed. Our conversion system, two wheels, two wheels, one bike. This system works. The only way I know that I have enough frames is because that word consumed means the reaction occurred. You would hope that we would be clear enough to always use the word consume. That is not always the case. So we have to be careful with the English language. Okay? Because this is an English chemistry learning community, your chemistry instructor strives his best to be as accurate with the English language as possible, but can make mistakes. So what can happen on a test? Yo, Mike, I don't think you were clear enough here. I'll take a look at it and be like, mm, yeah, I was. Uh, or I'll be like, no, you're right. I screwed that up. Let's add this word. Right. And that benefits everyone because he usually comes up to the front of class and says, on number And announce it to everybody. Right? So we getting a little bit more confident. You're like, yeah, I got this. Today. Uh, one more. Yeah. How'd you know? One more. Yeah, there we go. Given three wheels and two frames, how many bikes can be made? Okay. okay, we already heard a shout out answer of one. Okay, just to be ordinary, I will solve this in one case first. So someone shouted out the answer was one. No, you got, you I got two bikes. You got two your wheels. wheel conversion, man. Okay. I have two components. I have to run those conversions as well. When I go through and run that system, I get through, whoops, not frames. Was it three? Yeah. That was two frames. Three wheels. Three wheels times one bike, two wheels equals... Someone said one. That says 1.5. Well, you can't have a unicycle in a cycle. I can't have half of a bicycle. Okay. That's a unicycle. That's a different unit. That's a different substance. So I can't do that. So I can't have half of a bicycle. So 
I might agree with you and say one. Okay? So if I'm going to do a chemistry equation, notice I said might, okay, for those of you that missed that English reference. Okay? For a chemical equation, can I end up with a fractional atom? No, can I end up with a fractional molecule? Yes. No. No, of course not. I can't have a quarter of a molecule. It doesn't exist. Okay? It doesn't happen. So that means we would always have to deal with whole numbers for our answers, right? You guys have been solving some problems, right? Do we always end up with whole numbers? No. No. So what happened? What did chemistry change? Or what about chemistry changed from the bike example? We'll come back to that. So remember that. It's unfortunate, but remember that. Is it something about masses? If I asked you to reach out and grab a bicycle, would you be able to do that within some reasonable amount of time? Reach out and grab a bicycle. So a couple people say, yep, absolutely. I'm presuming because you're not stealing a bicycle, but you have access to one. Okay. So yes, we could get a hold of a bicycle. Reach out and grab a water molecule. I said a water molecule, single one. Not happening. I can't do it either. Okay. We can't do that. Okay. There's maybe 100 people on the planet that can. Okay. With a lot of special equipment, yes. They've got really tiny hands. Was there a movie? Yeah. what? Um, so... What did chemistry do to fix that issue? Because building this bicycle, I need to be able to grab all those parts. If I want to build a water molecule, I have to be able to grab a water molecule and I, to say I've got it, and I have to be able to grab a hydrogen molecule and an oxygen molecule to be able to do this. So what did, what did chemistry do to allow that chemical reaction to occur? It is already happening, but chem so chemists just observe. They don't do anything. So no, when you go into the lab, you just kind of stare at me and be like, <laughs> you can stare at me while I stare at another thing. We can recreate. We can recreate. How are we recreating? You can recreate the building of the bicycle. Chemical equations, reactions, how? What are you doing to do that? Because you aren't grabbing a single molecule. What stuff are you putting together? What? Say that again. You're putting together? Moles. Moles. What is a mole? A single unit. Of a mole is not a single unit. It no, is. It's a conversion. It's a conversion factor. A mole was 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd right. of that species. So a very large number. We could go through and deal with 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and bring in moles on this. I'm going to make an argument that you probably don't want to do that. Okay. Fair? Fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So instead of using that really big number, I'm going to use a different scaling factor. I'm going to use 1,000. This wasn't two frames. This was 2,000 frames. That wasn't two wheels. That was, or three wheels. That was 3,000 wheels. If I now go through and look at my answer, I would have 2,000 bikes. Or I would have 1,500 bikes. But because this is a science class, let's use scientific notation. That is actually 1.5 times 10 to the third and 2.0 times 10 to the third. Can I have 1.5 times 10 to the third bikes? Yes. That's not fractional anymore. Because I have the scalar factor, I'm no longer looking at a fractional atom. I may have a decimal value, but when multiplied by thousands, I don't have a half a bike. Why not hundreds? Okay. Could be hundreds. Oh, okay. Okay. Could be any scalar factor. Ultimately, doesn't matter. So what is the big difference between the physical world that we work in and chemistry. 
Chemistry can't grab single molecules, and so we invented the scalar factor of moles. So that when we go through and do these conversions, we can end up with fractional values. Because I can have a fractional value of a very large number. Make sense? So in the example that we've got up here where we couldn't get fractional values, we had to do an extra layer of interpretation. Guess what we don't have to do in chemistry? That extra layer of interpretation. We just do the math. There's the number. It's that many moles or whatever the mass is, and we're done. Awesome. Chemistry has an advantage over the physical world. Yes. Right. may not be the happiest advantage, but we do. Right. So we can get fractional values in chemistry. We can't get fractional values in the real world when looking at single reactions. Okay. There's a strong argument that even if we scaled up to 2,000 frames and 3,000 wheels, that you still have a hard time processing that because those numbers are large. And that's only thousands. That's 10 to the third. Okay. This is why we have these conversion factors. This is why we use this system. It's to take things that we don't comprehend well and put it into a real-world situation or a manipulatable situation. Think we're done? Can't, can't ever be done. Last question. This, this, a dump for one more. No. Given 40 grams of wheels. Given 40 grams of wheels and 15 pounds of frames, how many bikes can you make? Why do you not know that? Oh, you mean the chemical equation doesn't tell you anything about the mass of each of those things? No, what does it tell you? The number of them. The quantity. We can use a scalar factor and scale that up to the mole of them. Yeah, unfortunately we can. But we cannot do anything with mass. We would need an extra conversion factor. One that... I picked random numbers. They aren't very good numbers. We would need a scalar to convert, or a conversion factor to convert the mass of those wheels into the number of wheels so that we could use the equation. So when we're dealing with our chemical equations, or even our chemical formulas... The biggest thing we want to do is convert everything into a number of particles. Because a chemical formula allows me to change from one substance to another substance in that formula. Okay. And I'll address your comment in a second. Okay. The chemical equation allows us to convert from a number of one piece to a number of another. That's our mole value. So pretty much every conversion we do, the very first step is going to be to convert into moles because moles is a number of our particles. Okay? We could go into atoms. We probably don't want to do that because atoms brings in that horrible 10 to the 23rd aspect to our powers of 10, and we don't like dealing within those systems. Okay? I did hear a comment that we do have a conversion between grams and but something the else. Of the okay. What was the conversion factor that you found on the front of the exam? Grams to pounds. Oh grams to pounds. You wouldn't be able to make one Is that a number of wheels? No. No. So that doesn't convert. You need the mass for that particle. Okay? For a single particle or a single atom in which case the mass units would be a single atom and mass units. Atoms begin with A, mass units was M and U. We have AMUs found on our periodic table. Or if we did the mass for a mole of those particles, that's the molar mass, which is also found on our periodic table. Conveniently, because we picked a number, Avogadro's number, to scale those values up to the mole amount okay, in grams. That's why we've done Avogadro's number, or why it was created was to make the periodic table more useful than it already was. <sighs> How to build a bicycle. All right, so moles, equations, and coefficients. This is really just kind of a big summary slide. If we're given the chemical equation here, mm -hmm. right, 
That means if I take two molecules of nitrogen oxide and one molecule of oxygen, I can produce two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. Okay. Right? Yeah. What's the UV? The UV means I needed ultraviolet light to get the reaction to occur. Okay. Right? What if I scaled this up to 2,000 <laughs> molecules? The Oof. That's a big scale up by 1,000. How could I possibly figure out the number of molecules for oxygen? Notice they already tell you that it's 1,000. That's an eraser. Conservation of mass. Nope. Dang it. Mm. <laughs> Close, though, right? Okay, 2,000 molecules of? NO. NO. And I'm trying to get to? Molecules of? I wish I had this like conversion factor where I could put molecules of NO on the bottom and molecules of O2 that says molecules, I'm tired of writing it, O2 on the top. What do you do? What do you mean I do? It's up there. Up where? The first. Oh, you mean that the line right above it? Where did that line come from? The equation. The chemical equation, yeah. If we use that conversion factor, what is our conversion factor between molecules of O2 and molecules of NO? Well, one molecule of O2, two molecules of NO. 2,000 divided by 2 is? Oh, 1,000. Okay. What if I scaled up even more? Okay, I scaled up to 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Man, that's a big number. Okay, how would I convert that into molecules of O2? For those of you saying the same way in kind of like a questioning tone, you don't have to question it. Same way. The exact same way, our MLCS, NO, MLCS, O2, 1, and 2. What is 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 2? 6.02 6. times... 10 to the 23rd. Wow, that was kind of neat. Okay. That would work also for the other one. Why did they scale it up by that much? I mean, that seems like kind of a weird random number to scale up. What did they scale it up by? 10 to 23 Avogadro's. Avogadro's number. 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd is merely 2 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, also known as a mole. So the chemical equation, just like our periodic table gives us both AMU's molecule atom relationships and mole relationships, our chemical equation does the same thing. We can get molecule relationships and we can get mole relationships. Depending on what unit we're in, we may decide to use either relationship, be it molecules or be it moles. It really just depends on the problem we're solving. All right? Exact same question or system, except here they've shown all of the individual conversion types that we could go through and use, how we could convert between each of those different units. Okay. Those numbers are just pulled from the coefficients of our balanced chemical equation. <coughs> okay. How many moles of CO2? Now we got a chemistry one. Moles of CO2 are necessary to make one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So again, our process, what do we start with? Uh, what do we want to get? What do we want? Sodium hydrogen carbonate. And the HCO3. We want one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. What was I given? Oh, one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. What did I just find? My answer. That was a really dumb question. What was I asked to find? Moles of, CO2. Moles of CO2. Read your question very, very carefully. You were asked for moles of CO2. Okay. What was I given? One mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. One mole of our sodium hydrogen carbonate. Okay. Is moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate the same thing as moles of CO2? No. No. So what do I need to do? I need to get rid of the unit of moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. And what do I need? Uh, the 
is one O. What do you I want? want? You want uh, O2. Moles of CO2. 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 One, oh, Greg, CO2. what are you doing back there? I, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry, I guess I don't know what's going on. Where do we find the conversion factor? Oh, no, no. It was in the equation. What? That conversion factor is found where? In, the in a chemical equation. So to solve this question, what do I need? Equation. A chemical equation. And while you were all too busy staring at Greg. <laughs> no, I was like, where'd it go? I saw what happened. <laughs> I saw what happened. Right. We need a chemical equation to do this. Where do I get the information about a chemical equation? Right? It could be directly given to you. Right? Here's the chemical equation. Or... Or do research. You could do research if it's homework, right? Ooh. Or it could be written <laughs> written in English text, much like it was on exam two, on the conversion of hydrogen and oxygen into water. You were supposed to come up with that chemical equation. So you're responsible for the nomenclature to do that. Right? So if we actually go back and say, okay, well, Mike's not a complete. I said complete. I'm, I'm, I'm aware of my level of jerkiness. <laughs> Let's give you a chemical equation. Okay, so there's one CO2 and one. Oh, wait, is that balanced? What's that? You didn't finish erasing it. <laughs> <laughs> that chemical relationship to get your mole-mole conversion has to come from a balanced chemical reaction. Okay? If you don't have a balanced chemical reaction, what do you need to do? Balance it. Okay? You need to balance it. Is the equation balanced? No, what you should find is the sodiums don't balance. To fix that, what would you do? Put a two in front of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. You could check the rest of those pieces, and you should find that it is now balanced. Bring that information from the chemical equation into my conversion factor. Where did you get the one from? I don't see anything written in front of that. Yeah, it's one. So. Remember when we talked about balancing equations? There's nothing written there. It's an implied one. So we know we have a one mole of CO2. We know we have two moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. We go through and solve, and we end up with... That math wasn't supposed to be that difficult. Point five, yeah. Point five. Oh, I've got a fractional amount. I'm not allowed to have a fractional amount. I'm not talking about molecules. What am I talking about? Moles. Moles. I can have half a mole. Okay? So, do we want to do this one? No, I'm fine skipping it and moving on. If you guys think you're, you're solid on it, then that's on you, and I can continue to move. Not solid, on it. Not solid do it. So here's our system. What do we want for an answer? Grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. What are we starting with? Moles of CO2. Moles of CO2. Okay. Substance. Or not substance yet. The measurement unit, moles versus grams. Do we have to convert that? Yes. Yes. Substance, CO2, sodium hydrogen carbonate. Do we have to convert that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have at least two conversions we have to worry about. Okay. We have a mole mass one. And we also have a substance one. Let's do mass. Let's try and do mass. So moles of CO2, what am I going to convert it to? You said mass, right? Yeah. Grams of what? CO2. Remember, our mole mass conversion can only come from the periodic table. It only comes from that formula. So I'm not even going to worry about that number. The unit I now have is grams of CO2. So I have the correct unit of grams. How do I convert the substance? Uh, there, there would be 
There's a chemical equation. What is the unit on my chemical equation? Uh, yes. Yes, it's not a unit, but it's a fair answer. Molecules. Is grams molecules? No. No. Okay, so we could try and do some kind of conversion there. Okay. To get molecules. Okay, how do I convert grams of CO2 into molecules of CO2? Say that again, Bianca. Right idea. Molar mass. Okay, molar mass is the right idea, wrong implementation. Why is it not the molar mass? Oh, it's not a mole. This isn't a mole. This is looking at a molecule. Okay. So that becomes challenging because it's not going to be grams then, right? It would then need to be AMUs to get grams in. That's going to be a bit problematic. Okay. So while a mass conversion needs to happen here, we're running into a bit of a dilemma here because I would need to get into molecules of CO2. I could try and go moles of CO2. I can accept that. Did everybody look back at that and see what did we just get rid of? We just got rid of moles of CO2. How would we do the conversion of grams of CO2 to moles of CO2? The exact same thing we just did. Yeah. Okay. Perfectly awesome idea. Let's convert mass. Did it work? Uh, no. No. So what do you do? We just went in a circle? Yep. We went in a circle. So we could continue to go in that circle, or we could just say converting into mass was probably not the best idea. What should we convert first? It was just an idea. The substance. Wasn't yesterday... No. Depends on the unit that you're starting with. Why am I allowed to convert the substance outright? That's what, yeah. To convert substances, what unit do I need to be in? Moles or molecules. What am I given to start with? Moles. Moles. Does it make sense to go ahead and convert our substance right out of the gate? Yes. What is the conversion factor between those? Uh, one, two, one. Right, what unit would I now have? Uh, Moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Do I have the right substance? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do I have the right unit? Uh, no. I would need to find the relationship between sodium, the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate and the moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Where would I find that information? <coughs> On the periodic table, because Mike is awesome at math, or rather cheated and looked at somebody else who already solved it. The answer is 84. Right. Sodium is a 23, plus 1 for hydrogen, plus 12 for carbon, plus 3 times 16 for oxygen. And that equals 84. We now have our answer. So we have to string together multiple conversions, and we've now got our final system. Okay? you are responsible for knowing where to find those conversions. Are they things that you've done now several times over? Yeah. Yes. Okay. But you've done a bunch of conversions. You're responsible for knowing which conversion is useful and when. Worst case, you loop back on yourself. That's okay. Just undo. Nice catch. Okay. Kind of makes sense? So before we completely do that, we're going to skip that one because that one's too easy. We're going to skip that one and that one. This one looked kind of familiar. Sadly. Why sadly? This looks an awful lot like the question on exam two, right? right. That question involved moles right, and converting substances. You mean the stuff that we just spent the last two or three lectures looking at? Yes. So this question changes now that we've done unit three. It changes to this. You're responsible for reading that one question and knowing where all of those conversion factors came from. That's the neat part. 
You're probably saying cool sarcastically, but I think it is cool. Relatively little information, but we're able to compose that, deconstruct it into a full-on chemical reaction to be able to convert substances. We're able to recognize that with the periodic table, I can convert the mass into moles. I have that conversion ability, and I now just scale it all together to get my final answer. Okay? So I am done talking, believe it or not. If we go back and take a look at the original question, we'll make this an interesting one. There's a big old fat mistake in that question. Spend some time to find it. You don't have to do it now, but 